introducing Pat Cherry, a former owner of Cherry Painting Company. What does that sound like hearing former? Well, that makes me know that I'm getting old uh, and, you know, I become less, uh, you guys become more. Well, if that, um, if this doesn't make you feel old, celebrating your 52nd year with Cherry Painting, uh, that's a remarkable number. Yeah, it's, uh, that's a long time. And when I first started out in this business, I never dreamed that I'd be where we are now and the things that's happened. Uh, as you well know, when I started painting, your grandfather was a painter. And so my your uncle and I both learned from him how to paint. And he taught us how to run jobs. So we were running apartment complexes and he'd put me on one job and he'd put Pat on the other job. After a while, not very long, we kind of transitioned out of that phase. My dad kind of retired. So my, my uh, your uncle and I both went to work for a little small company called Central Painting. And Grady was uh, kind of a typical construction owner. I mean, he drank a lot. He didn't pay any attention to what he was doing. And I pretty well did most of the things in the in the field for him. And uh, <clears throat> all of a sudden, one weekend, I saw him on a Friday, he brought the payroll. And then on a Monday morning, his wife showed up and said, hey, we're out of business. Grady died Sunday. So first thing I told your uncle was, hey, I want to try to get some of this work he's doing because, uh, you know, we're the guys was doing anyway. And so I went to some of the smaller guys and they were like, well, how could you do this? And I said, hey, you're talking to the guy that does this work anyway. All Grady did was have the money. So we kind of got a few little small jobs and that's how we kind of started out in the, in the paint business. So that was 1968. Yeah, so between 68 to 72, and it could even be 73, I can't, but the early 70s. I mean, obviously we struggled. Uh, we had a lot of days we didn't work. We did a few banks, Denny's, you know, just real small stuff, uh, 7 I mean, you name it. Just me and him working. When I got to the early 80s is when we really made our big move. And then we started doing all these high-rise buildings. I mean, we were doing 15, 20 at a time, uh, all down Central. LBJ, I mean, we were just doing tons of them. So then the mid eighties hit, and that's when the economy really turned for the worst. Um, can you talk a little bit about what that was like to uh, uh, experience that big of a downturn and, and what the state of the economy was in those, in the eighties? Uh, for the people that don't know in the eighties, just think of this, five of the top major banks in this city went bankrupt. I mean, there was no jobs. So I had a lot of friends of mine who were, were multi-millionaires and big, very big companies, had a 1, thousand, 1,500 employees. They went out of business. And we were like, wow, we're back down at, at the bottom again. We're gonna have to start all over and build this thing back up, which literally took 10 years. Was there ever a time that you guys came together and kind of questioned continuing? No, we never did. It's not about the money. If you do what you're supposed to in life and take care of your customers and do what you're supposed to with your employees and taking care, you will be successful. You may have a little <clears throat> rough times, but you'll be successful. I would always recommend without God in your company and without God in your heart, I think you're gonna have, you'll have a difficult time. I'm not saying you're gonna be a failure because there's lots of people that are successful that are atheists, but <clears throat> you've got to help, you get a lot of help from men upstairs, believe me. And I'm proud of both of you. And I'm proud, proud of you, both of you are Christians, and you're good people. And I think uh, there's nowhere to go but the top. Because we laid the foundation Carry the ball and get it done, man.